and we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be continuing the 3.0 main scenario. And as always, hello from Mifri. So we had just uh, finished battling some heretics and we were looking for Ice Heart, but we didn't find it yet. But we found ourselves now at this camp, uh, the Convictory, which is the camp of the Convictors. So now let's talk to Alphanode and do the next quest. So the next quest is called Camp of the Convictors. So Alphanode is eager to gather information on the heretics. So surely one of these people will have encountered it in um, heretics while out hunting. Pray speak with as many as you can, Mifri. Okay, so we're going to talk to, I guess, three of the heretics. <laughs> Lol, of the convictors, I should say, not heretics. Uh, nay, I know no of no heretics. Do you honestly expect me to keep track of every... Uh, Ramo, Vermont, and Bertinon that wanders in and out of camp. Okay. So, are there any heretics in the area? I have not the faintest idea why a heretic could pass under my very nose and I should be none the wiser. I hunt drag dragons my dear lady the big ones forever do i scan the skies for signs of my prey i care not for the miserable creatures that scurry upon the ground okay let's get the last one here we, this person is so looking for heretics you say why don't you go and bother uh, periquick or someone i've Enough keeping these preening fops fed and clothed as it is. It is no business of mine what folk do with themselves out there in the wilds. Okay, let's talk to this person last. So, something I can help you with, my lady. Heretics, is it? Well, I've never seen one myself, but that ain't to say I haven't heard a thing or two. So, we would be grateful for any information you can share with us. The gods know we've gleaned precious little from talking to the rest of these people. If it please my lord, I am Perike, a soldier by trade, though not much of one, if I'm honest. If it weren't for the love of stabbing folk that I took up the spear, you see. No, I was by order of Sir Genlot's father. Still, as long as they keep paying me wages, I ain't fussy as to what they have me do. Not everyone's as patient as me, though. Plenty of lowborn lads who get pressed into service start grumbling before they've seen their second battle. And once they've got to thinking how unfair it all is, it don't take much for the heretics to turn their heads. From what I hear, the simple promise of freedom tends to do it. That would explain how Lady Iceheart was able to expand her following so swiftly. Sad to say, some mates of mine gobbled down the heretics' tribe and asked for seconds told me they were off to the Western Highlands to light a signal fire. That's, that's how you would let the heretics know you're serious about joining their ranks, apparently. Send up some purple smoke and the bastards come to you. Is that so? Why then? I am minded to start a fire. Okay, so let's complete Camp of the Convictors. Okay, so next quest with Astinian. The next quest is called Purple Flame, Purple Flame. And we're actually going to earn an Aether Current for this one as well. So Astinian wishes to prepare a signal fire to lure into the heretics. So if we are to lure our foes to our position, then we must find a means of producing a signal of purple hue. As it so happens, I once heard the tale of a trapper who dropped the hide of a woolly yak onto his campfire. Aside from the terrible stench, the story was described 
in detail how the smoke from the smothered flames was tinged in a deep violet. You are a monster hunter of some note, are you not, Mifri? It should prove a trifling task for you to procure a number of hides. We may need to burn more than one ear of the heretic's notice our beacon. Master Alphano, you and I shall gather wood for the fire. Aye, it will take the both of us to find enough dry fuel in this frozen wasteland. Let us meet again at the Dreaming Dragon with the fruits of our labour. Nice. So let's go get some highs from Woolly Yaks to the north. Well, this is cool. So we're getting closer and closer to flying, which I'm very, very happy about. It will be nice to fly around this zone. But also that showed as well the fact that you do need to have done some of the main scenario in order to actually unlock flying. You can't just unlock flying straight away. It is gated content. Okay. Okay, here is one of the uh, woolly yaks. It is nice doing this as a tank because you hard as a rock, you barely take any damage. Okay, so that's one. Let's look for the next one. Right, so let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, here's another one. Almost dead. Done. So let's go now. Take these to Astinian. Not actually 100% sure how to get there because I've never been in this territory before, so we're going to run around. Exploring new lands, that's for sure. Ice Commander. So we're almost there, almost there. Okay, where is he? Is he up this hill? There he is. 
So it would seem that collecting firewood is a new experience for Master Alphanode. His must have been a privileged upbringing. <laughs> have you hides we need? Yep, so let's hand over the Yak hide. Hand over. Ah, uh -huh, so there's a purple fire. Ah, I should have known it would be you. Word reached me of a struggle with a small but well-armed band of trespassers. Forgive my comrades their hostility. Few come here uninvited. And fewer still, with good intent. Now, tell me why you are here. So we wish to stop Nithal's attack on Ishgard, we wish to speak with you. So, you seek to stem the Dravanian tide with talk? A romantic notion. If you but knew the truth. The spark which lit the flames of this animosity. You would understand the futility of your quest. Shall I relate it to you? The sordid history my gift has shown me. That which the Holy See has taken such pains to suppress. was more than a millennium past when an Elizan tribe first sought to claim the lands of Kirthas as its home. Unfortunately for them, Kirthas was already home to dragonkind, and they were not inclined to make way for the invaders. Thus did a bloody war begin, a war which might well have rumbled on until one or the other side was exterminated, had it not been for the resolve of a single woman. That woman's name was Shiva. While those around her fought and died, she attempted to parley with the dragons, and in so doing discovered them to be possessed of profound intelligence and reason. The great worm Hraesvalga in particular so enchanted Shiva that she found herself growing to love the creature whom her people considered a monster. In the eyes of a near immortal dragon, however, the fleeting life of an Elizan is as that of a freshly cut rose. Scarce has the flower bloomed before it begins to fade and wither. Such melancholy musings plagued Trace Volga, who had found in Shiva an unexpected and beloved soulmate. He knew that all too soon, death would snatch her away from him. Unable to bear the thought of their separation, the maid bid the worm consume her, that their spirits might be entwined for eternity. Though loath to perform the deed, Hraesvalga ultimately gave in to her plea, and soon thereafter the tale of their ill-fated love spread throughout the two warring factions. No more could they raise blade or claw against one another, knowing that the souls of their kin were so inextricably bound. In the days that followed, man and dragon learned to live in harmony, and together built a nation unlike any the world had ever known. For two hundred years did this blissful age of peace continue, as it would to this day, had vilest envy not stirred in the hearts of the Elizin. It is said that worms owe their longevity to the boundless reserves of vitality found within their eyes. And twas in this belief that a traitorous band of knights deceived their allies of some two centuries, and took by force that which they coveted. Nidhogg. He who now stands poised to unleash his wormlings upon Ishgard was the great dragon who lost an eye to Elizan treachery. And until he prizes it from the hands of the traitor's progeny, 
No amount of conciliatory words will stay his fury. You are wrong, Lady Iceheart. Lest you misunderstand, I do not doubt your vision of the past. Tis true that Nidhogg greatly desired to reclaim the Eye. Indeed, it was for that very reason that I kept it with me as I roamed the land, attempting to draw him away from the city. Ew. Good gods. Until recently, Nidhogg seemed unable to resist its allure and pursued me relentlessly. Needless to say, that is no longer the case. Now, it would seem, he has fixed his attention on Ishgard itself, though he knows full well the eye does not reside there. You believe he targets the capital for another reason? I believe reason has all but left him. Through the eye, I feel much of what Nidhogg feels. And the dragon's thirst for vengeance will not be quenched by aught less than a sea of blood. If Nidhogg is indeed lost to reason, might we not seek an audience with Hraesvelger instead? He has thus far shown no inclination to aid in the invasion of Ishgard, and may yet welcome our efforts to broker a peace. You still believe that a peaceable solution can be found? Very well. I will take you to him. Our road will lead us to Dravania, the homeland of Dragonkind. There we shall ascend unto the clouds, where Hraesvelger resides. Oh my god. We are starting to get our power back. Is autumn miss, my friend? I sense the many battles are beginning to take their toll. Rest a while. And should you lose sight of us, Dravania lies beyond the mountains to the west. Vestiges of thy mistress's blessing are not as faint as once they were. Thy will to succeed grants thee unusual fortitude. But will it be enough? Well, that was one of the best cutscenes ever. That's complete. Okay, so I attuned to the Aether Current because that's the first one I've actually done. So let's now talk to Yes Yesay. So the next quest is called Where the Chocobos Roam. 
So Lady the Ice Heart stands ready to lead you and your companions into Dravania. You are Mifri, yes. Pray address me as you say, if you wish. Tis passing strange, is it not, that fate should bring us together thus. Never did I think to walk alongside the Warrior of Light. But history is full of unexpected al alliances. Shall we make our way into Dravania then? The chill of the Western Highlands is unrelenting, and I would sooner be under the sheltering canopy of the Chocobo Forest. Nice. So there's a Chocobo Forest, but I wonder if there's going to be a Chocobo Paradise. So to get to the Dravania Forelands, we need to run just northwest and go through the zone line. I actually went through the zone line a while ago um, on the quest for gathering, but now we're, let's say, officially invited. <laughs> so let's go. And given that that was, in theory, the last Aether Current of the zone, then I will be able to unlock all the flying in the zone, which I'm very happy about. And after the next quest, I will be able to unlock flying on my company Chocobo, not just my black Chocobo. But that will all be in the next episode. So to reduce congestion, the area you're about to enter has been divided into multiple identical instances. Select a destination. Yeah, I've got no preference. So obviously there's a lot of people here, so that must be why they give you the option. Beyond Abalathia's spine, the great mountain range that spans the continent of Aldenard from east to west. Into the deepening shadows of Som Ar, where lies the ancient home of Dragon Cup. To a land where the soil slithers and the skies seethe with sinuous shapes, they came. Wow. You can say an A for current right there. So, anyway, let's talk to Yusei. So, we now stand on the threshold of Dravania. The path to Sam Ah will take us far to the west, beyond the embrace of the forest branches. It will be long and demanding, sorry, it will be a long and demanding journey. Might I suggest that we take our rest of the village up ahead and see that we are properly provisioned? There is a village here, but I thought these lands um, the sole domain of the dragon kind. Why would anyone choose to live in so perilous a place? The wild chocobos. Tail Feather was built by hunters who take their living capturing and selling the beasts. Their leader, Marshamp, is an acquaintance of mine. Being a Gregorious sort, he will no doubt welcome our arrival and he will also possess more recent knowledge of the road we seek to travel. I trust there are no objections. Only to this ceaseless chatter. If we are to meet this acquaintance of yours, let us do it before Ishgard burns. Okay, so let's now go speak with Marchamp who is right here at Tailfeather. So it feels nice that we're done with the previous son. So it feels like now we're making progress. We're now welcome in the second zone of the expansion. Okay, so we're doing quite well so far. So, almost there. Cool. Here we are. So, I'm assuming he's in this building. Uh, 
plants here he is. So, well, tell my hide and call me Leatherface. We have visitors. Aho, oh, and if it ain't the lovely Yasei, or Yasail, it's been too long, girl. That it has, Marchamp, that it has. My companions and I are on a pilgrimage to Som Ai. Might we stay in Tailfeather a while and prepare for the next leg of our journey? Of course, of course. Stay as long as you like. In fact, I wouldn't suggest leaving the forest at all. The dragons have been absolutely bleeding murderous of late. Forgive me, sir, but I am not sure I understand. Do the dragons not bother you here in the forest? Bother us? Did you say not explain things to you, boy? You've seen them towering callum trees all about, haven't you? If you were flying about the canopy, you'd barely be able to see the ground. As you'd expect, the local wildlife's canny enough to stay hidden beneath the leaves, which is why the dragons do their hunting elsewhere, and we can do ours in peace. I see. Thank you for the explanation. You're welcome. Now, I know it wouldn't stop your sail here, but dragons ain't the only things you need to keep an eye out for, especially if you're set on heading west. Okay, so let's complete. So we're now going to complete the quest where the chocobos roam. Okay, so let's do... Well, we can do triple try challenge, that's interesting. So, Worse than Dragons is the next quest. So, Merchamp would give you fair warning about what awaits to the west. So, I dare say you're wondering what could possibly be worse than Dragons, eh? Well, I'll tell you, the bloody Nath. They're what might get you if you crossed an antling with a Megalocrab and taught the thing how to walk on two legs. They never used to stray far from their hives out of fear of dragons, but they've gotten a lot more aggressive of late, sending out war parties for moms in all directions. They've even taken a, a, to harassing the Dravanians in their own layers, if you can believe it. And when they venture into the forest, which is more and more by the way, they certainly ain't afraid to come after my lot. I can only imagine how much worse it'd be closer to the Nath's home territory. Okay, so let's talk to Yasail. So it would seem that much has changed in Dravania. The Nath were not wont to cause such strife when I lived there. You lived here in Dravania? Aye, twas the time following the calamity. My family was dead, my home was gone, and I had fled from the bitter cold into these lands. I knew not the paths of the frozen sorry, of the forest then, and wandered out from under the protection of the of its bows. That was when I chanced upon her Volga. He had descended from his mountain lair to feed on food. Well, to, to hunt for food. My exhausted mind could not contend with the sight of the majestic worm, nor the vision of the past his presence visited upon me. Thankfully, Merchomp found my unconscious form at the edge of the trees and nursed me back to health, and in tail feather I remained for some time. Hence your familiarity with the locals, but I interrupted you. You were saying that these nafs were once a peaceful people? Peaceful would not be the most fitting description. They are a fiercely territorial tribe, and any who intrude upon their domain are attacked without hesitation or quarter. Outside the borders of their homeland, however, they were rarely hostile indeed. Uh, we were even able to trade with them on occasion. They have changed then. 
What of it? We have not the time to creep through the underbrush of some roundabout route. I say we make straight for Salmai and crush any unruly insect we meet on the foot. A more direct path then. Very well. Let us first follow the trail west out of the forest and make for the statue of the stained one. From there we should have a fair view of the road that leads us to some isle, uh, shall we? Okay, so let's go, let's go. So we need to go to the north and then there. So now we're going to be uncovering more of the map that we haven't before. Right, so where are we going? We obviously can't go that way because it's a mountain in the way. <laughs> Let's try and avoid conflict for now. Okay, here we go. Ah, there's a fight here. Okay, seems simple enough. Let's keep going. Next location. We need to go there. That's a big mosquito. Okay, so not too far. Okay, so we crossed the bridge. Yep, it's there. Wow, just taking in the sights, unbelievably beautiful. If only I could play this game on like 4K or something. <laughs> That's the dream. 4K on maximum, 60 frames per second. Yep, in my dreams, I will achieve it one day. Okay, but now press on to the stained one. Okay, here we go. Here's our destination. We'll just reset the mob and then we'll arrive. Okay, here we go. So, should we chance to meet Merchamp again, remind me to thank him. Had he not warned us to expect the naff, I doubt I would be standing here. 
Amid ruins, uh, I would tentatively describe of Ishgardian, the style, if not quite identical, betrays a definite resemblance. You have a scholar's eye, Master Alphanode. This structure is in fact over a thousand years old, and it is a remnant of the age when our ancestors and dragon kin lived together in peace. You claim this is evidence of our harmonious past. I was taught that these buildings were constructed by heretics in honor of your Dravanian masters. This rubble inspires no such awe in me. Stubborn fool, how desperately you cling to the false teachings of your beloved Holy See. Enough, both of you. We are threatened... Sorry, you threatened the success of our mission with this in Kesson squabbling. Or in Cison. Uh Mifri, pray reason with these two. Okay, our goals are the same. Set aside this for now. The truth of the past will be revealed, grunt. Okay, well, yeah. Our goals are the same. Uh, quite. Lest you forget, our goal is to prevent a war which will claim the lives of Dravanians and Ishgardians alike. If we are to accomplish this, you must learn to tolerate each other's presence. Trust in Mithri's gift. In time, the secret of history will be brought to light. Let that be enough, Istinian. You would have me keep my counsel until Mifri's visions confirm the truth? Very well, but bait me not. Our meeting with her Valga will likely provide the catalyst Mifri's gift requires, as it did mine. Let us press on. Okay, so let's complete. Okay. So I think that's a good time to end the episode and we will just in the next episode carry on and head towards the dragon and see what he has to say to us. So anyway guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri.